Hi, this is Mark Laughlin with Ambidextra Gunfighter. I'm going to do a executive summary of the Ambidextra Gunfighter video series. Now what I hope this video does is in a short time space give you a quick overview of what the series is about and then perhaps encourage you to go get the full details in the full four-part video series. Now to start off with the first video talks about why be ambidextrous and that comes down to very simply it's to make optimal use of cover that is to use cover from both right and left side without exposing as uh, nearly as much of your body for example if you shoot out the left side and you're shooting right-handed uh, you're exposing a good part of your vital organ area if I had to choose between wearing body armor or being ambidextrous I would definitely choose amb being ambidextrous but ideally you would use have advantage take advantage of both but the advantage of ambidextrous is that it's with you everywhere and from every across every weapon system and it's always available to you. you don't have to run and go put on your body armor being ambidextrous is with you all the time another advantage of being ambidextrous is to use the terrain to make optimal use of natural point of aim so for example if you're on really rough rocky terrain or at an angle uh, it may depend on what you're shooting at it you might want to shoot left or right handed to have the best supported position to shoot ambidextrous in that given the terrain so it's flexibility there well so being ambidextrous for cover and concealment and for optimal use of terrain that's the why now how to become ambidextrous uh, really hope you'll go check out the video on that it's basically though you keep both eyes open you start from close behind a object that you're using for cover it could be a tree or in the case I use an example here is an inflatable paintball bunker but then you're close behind cover and you work left and right with your left and right eye and then gradually as your eyes learn to pick up the optics while they're being blocked by cover when you're close you gradually move back until you reach the point where you can actually switch left and right in the open field and your eyes will automatically pick up the sights now this is basically what you're doing is you're training your eyes to eliminate a dominant eye or to at least reduce a dominant eye and um, it's reached the point where if I do the whole the uh, you know detecting your dominant eye test, it's uh, it really depends on it, what object is out in the field out there on which eye uh, is the one that is is detected as dominant. Now the the next thing is the what what is the ambidextral gunfighter need in his equipment, and that we're talking basically about the uh, MDR by Desert Tech and uh, what we need is a rifle that is perfectly mirrored left and right that is the controls on the left hand side are identical to the controls on the right hand side they're in the exact same position they feel the exactly the same uh, the trigger of course when you shoot a rifle whether you're shooting left or right handed we hope that the trigger feels the same we definitely do not want the trigger to be five pounds and crisp when shooting right handed and then 15 pounds and gritty when shooting left-handed that would be a recipe for disaster so we want our controls perfectly mirrored from the the selector switch magazine release boat release uh, charging handles everything perfectly mirrored left and right now the uh, a kind of a an example of where I experienced some issues with my BCM uh, recce was at a uh, known distance apple seed event and I was qualifying uh, getting qualifying scores I did get them qualifying left and right but the first time I tried to qualify left is I switched over I just didn't even got in the zone and it went on the the two drills that are kind of time limited the uh, standing to sitting and then the rapid fire prone where you have to do a magazine change uh, I did not have a adapter here to run a magazine release on the left hand side and when I got to the point where I need to drop the magazine I was in the zone and I just automatically didn't even think about it just reached up and pushed expecting the magazine to drop out it didn't drop out so I pushed harder 
and it didn't drop out still and so then I, I it really took me out of the zone to figure out what is going on why is my magazine not dropping out it's because it's not perfectly mirrored your brain automatically wants to mirror left and right once you once it kind of figures out that you need to be ambidextrous the other advantage of the particular for the MDR besides being perfectly mirrored is being a bullpup it puts the weight very close to your body so it's not sticking out very far and your support hand is in tight so you have a very uh, short triangle of support for the rifle and so that makes it a very quick handling it makes it easy to manipulate and operate single-handed and it also improves the ability to transition from left to right or right to left and then left and left and back to right now of course the overall length being shorter even though this has the exact same length barrel as my bcm recce it is about eight inches shorter and with that shorter overall length that means you're able to move left and right from behind cover while still being close to that cover now the other thing that the for a uh, bullpup, a lot of bullpups uh, claim to be ambidextrous, but really they can either be configured left or right. And the advantage of the MDR is that its ejection system is throwing the case forward, so when you're shooting left-handed, it's uh, not hitting you in the face. So that's pretty crucial on a bullpup rifle. <clears throat> Now, how about some non-ambi benefits of the bullpup, and specifically the MDR uh, bullpup rifle? <clears throat> One is muzzle buoyancy. Now, what do I mean by that? That is basically when you factor in the weight distribution of the rifle with your 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 pistol grip hand you consider this the fulcrum right here this is the fulcrum point with your pistol grip hand how much weight is on the muzzle depending on how much you, ammo you have in the mag it's a negative two to negative eight ounces in other words it's got some lift up there now the bcm in comparison as a as a ar um, example is with your fulcrum way back here there's quite a bit of weight extending out past that fulcrum for one-handed operation now of course you when you're shooting one-handed you can pull it in your shoulder and get some kind of leverage on it to help support it but what you have here now is from this fulcrum point we have 36 ounces of weight out at the end of this basically at the end of this rifle 36 ounces of weight so over two pounds so it's kind of like if you hold this out you know one hand you can see that it becomes very quickly your muscles <clears throat> your muscles become fatigued now why is that important <clears throat> now why is it important that you have a buoyant muzzle now, there's a couple reasons one is the whole one-handed operation thing it allows you to climb a ladder while still use one hand to climb a ladder or climb uh, steep terrain while still keeping the muzzle up on target and then uh, also uh, to drag a, a wounded comrade out of the harm's way while providing cover fire or a wounded ladder now the <clears throat> Uh, of course the other thing is for uh, sliding or diving for cover uh, so if you're sliding down a hill and you're doing one-handed and you need to use one hand to help support yourself to as you baseball slide down a hill or if you're diving to cover and the way that typically works what we do in paintball now this is speculative that if it applies for real world combat was we rotate the rifle over the gun over to on the kind of its side like this and it's held out for the diving part of it and uh, so what you want is you want some buoyancy in the muzzle so that when you hit the ground that muzzle that extra weight on the AR will dig in and pole value you uh, over and potentially dislo your dislocate your shoulder or uh, you know break your collarbone or something so for diving having some buoyancy in the muzzle is pretty crucial now the other thing we want to look at when comparing rifles is the kinetic kinetic energy that you have available to you per the total amount of weight 
So for example, this is a 762 by 51, 762 NATO versus the 556 Recce. And so you want to figure, you know, you can also look at rounds per ounce and, and our rifles, it's not as big a deal because you can carry, if you're carrying a rifle, you're probably carrying extra magazines. But let's say if you're carrying one magazine's worth of ammo on this rifle, in this case, 20 rounds, what is the kinetic energy how much total kinetic energy do you have in this weapon per its overall weight versus the an AR-15? And of course, 7.62 is much more kinetic energy. It's a it's a heavier round, uh, equal or higher velocity, I guess, but uh, a similar velocity at least. And uh, so. 20 rounds of this has quite a bit of kinetic energy. Now, given that the MDR uh, weighs 8.3 pounds, it's, it's, that's right in line with the, um, you know, your typical uh, AR-10 or 308 battle rifle uh, and lighter than quite a few of them. But uh, uh, the, has, the MDR has actually about the same weight, maybe a little bit more on their 5.56 version of the bullpup. And which that kind of puts the 5.56 version of this a little bit on the heavy side. So we definitely would like to see the weight reduction there for the 5.56 version. But it certainly is gonna be very easy to manage on a 5.56 with uh, you know, that, that extra weight uh, mitigating any the minimal, already minimal recoil of a 5.56 round. And then so on the 762, what I did to mitigate some recoil because of the fact that uh, when doing the turkey neck cheek weld, I was right up in here behind the pick rail and getting smacked in the face a bit. Uh, one went with a Voodoo Innovations muzzle brake and it has the compensator points on the top. So it holds the muzzle down pretty flat and reduces the felt recoil by a significant amount. In fact, it probably shoots very similar to uh, you know, my 5.56 AR-15. This is Mark Laughlin with the Ambidextra Gunfighter. Uh, please definitely check out the, the, the true four videos on this series. This is really kind of just a, a quick overview, executive summary, introduction to the Ambidextra Gunfighter video series. So if you want to learn how to become ambidextrous, definitely check out the How to Become Ambidextrous video. And uh, it gives you the full details on how to, the process of eliminating eye dominance and the whole thought process of you want to mirror perfectly left and right your body as well and then uh, also be sure and check out uh, um, Imperial Age the, some of the a bit of them I used a bit of their music at the beginning and at the end of this video you can check out their website I'll include a link down in the description some people call it symphonic rock and so it has a very uh, masculine rock sound combined with a very harmonic uh, feminine uh, vocals so it's it's really cool I think you'll most people will enjoy it very much Mark Laughlin with Ambidextra Gunfighter please like share and subscribe and uh, look forward to the next video